We are starting a journey across the bridge into an unknown future. Now, when I say that in Silicon Valley, people get really excited. Cool, let's go, let's do it. I'm not seeing exactly that reaction from you all. We have, as people, globally, already gone through and completed a crash course in agility. Over the last four years, we've had unexpected challenges thrown at us that we have survived. We're here, we're alive today. I believe we as people and society have fundamentally changed already. We've redefined what does work mean? It doesn't mean nine to five commuting anymore. It helps us to rethink about life, our relationships with each other and with the planet. While we were adapting, technology power, capabilities and algorithms have grown exponentially. The data lakes utilized by Apple and Google and Microsoft and Amazon are overflowing just last year. 20 billion US dollars invested in emerging technology, which can be defined as AI, virtual reality, robotics, Web3, Metaverse, remember that from a year ago, and quantum computing, which will increase the compute power and the speed of technology by 1,000%. So November 30th was just the beginning. It was a paradigm shift, unlike anything we've ever experienced before, because that was the birthday of chat GPT that to some came out of nowhere, but it had come from research that started way back eight years ago with IBM Watson building on these data lakes, building on technology and how we were interfacing with it. And due to the workforce shortages, inefficiency, how do we restructure society that was the case in November, it grew like no other technology has ever grown. Within one week, it had one million users. In less than two months, Microsoft doubled down on their previous investments, $10 billion in one single investment within two months of a pilot. Today, some form of generative AI, whether it's ChatGPT, BART, or all of the other elements around that, is embedded directly or indirectly, deeply embedded in the vast majority of departments in 95% of the world's corporations. We're starting to see people talk about standards and guidelines and let's think about how we utilize it. Let's take some courses, let's be intelligent about the application. And that's what's gonna power us into a future where we as people can determine and discern how we utilize and what we utilize from technology whether that's generative AI, which is designed to do exactly that. And that could be generating an article, it could be generating a program, it could be generating a prototype of a new concept that's being researched. As well as predictive AI that has grown steadily in the background over the last four to five years, utilized by weather forecasters, stock forecasters, economics, utilized in pharmaceutical to predict based upon past patterns, how bodies and DNA will interact with different medications. Will there be a artificial general intelligence that will try to take over the world? I do believe that over the next five to 10 years, artificial intelligence in some manner will be as common today in society as putting on clothes, eating our breakfast, and going about our business. It will simply be an integral part. It's up to us, again, to determine how we can best use this. Like everything, it is simply a tool. And a tool that 
I believe, can fuel a much better future. It will give us more options for efficiency. Yes, we can go into the store and get service when we want, but we can pop in and pick something up if we're in a hurry. Yes, we can drive ourselves or we can hop into a Waymo without thinking about it. It will give us more options that allows us to achieve our purpose and be a better part of society. It can be scary, but it can also pay off in extreme success. I say that with confidence because as I look back over the last 20 years of my career working in Silicon Valley and watching these paradigms come, I've seen patterns right before a significant recession in the market. I was engaged by Shantanu Naren, who had been in the role of CEO of Adobe only two to three years at that time and was chartered with the biggest, most anticipated launch ever of software, for Adobe at least. Well, at that time, right after the iPhone was introduced, people were thinking different ways of creativity. They were thinking different kind of tools. I want to do things on my phone. And a global recession. Chantanu was not very successful at selling boxes of software. The board was saying, just do more of what you've always done. Discount, get customers, coerce people to buy it. We took a step back and said, let's think a little bit higher up. Let's forget about software. Let's think about what we're really trying to achieve. What was the founder's vision for Adobe? Well, that was simple. The founders wanted to create digital experience that unleashed creativity for people wherever they were on whatever kind of device, using whatever kind of tool. That led to, why don't we forget the boxes? Let's think about tools that people can use on their iPhone or on their desktop, and let's put that in the cloud. And that decision to focus on the purpose, what are we trying to do, not the tactic, sell software, commitment to try new ways of doing things. And let's collaborate with customers to see what they can do as opposed to pushing things at them. That led to significant success, both in revenue, profits, obviously stock. I believe the future will be different. I don't know what it will be, but I do know that if each of us as people start with thinking about the purpose. What am I trying to do? What is my organization really trying to do in the marketplace? And then let's explore what are the tools that we could use to help that and start small. Maybe it's deciding to take action to try one new AI related tool a week. Just try it and compare with each other. We're on this journey together. Let's collaborate and learn. That's gonna give us a stronger base of knowledge. And from there, we can begin to empower others to try something. The future is here. It's now up to us to choose how we co-create the success that is possible for each of us. What's most important? What can you explore? What can you try this week? Who's gonna be your accountability buddy to make sure you're actually doing something, not putting your head under the covers? And how can you empower others to go forward with confidence? I look very forward to hearing your reactions, your successes, and where you go in the future. Thank you.